But as long as we, do, we stay under at least the 20-day supply, which we keep on getting rejected, it's very, very tough to, to get excited for more than one day of rally. Maybe you squeeze out two day of rally. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So we're one day away from uh, the Fed announcement. Uh, the question is, do they raise, right? Do they absolutely raise with everything going on, uh, with oil being crazy? Again, it's been a pullback for the last a uh, couple of days or so, but with you know, with the inflation, with oil, with the war, with this and that, is this the right time, right? Is this the right time uh, to finally raise rates? Because we've been hearing about this imminent rate hike now. It feels like about two, three years, but that's kind of what it is. And the question is, is tomorrow going to be finally the day? Whether it's 25, 50, whatever the case may be, I, I, I don't know. You know, I have no idea. I'm not an economist. Um, I can't speak intelligibly about what the Fed is doing. I probably would guess there's three to five people who actually could have this conversation and put the right input behind it. But what we are, we are from the trading cycle. That's all we're talking about here. And the market's you know, been sell bias, right? We've been sell bias heavy uh, for the last couple of months. Like we can constantly, constantly uh, remind people on every single video, just like in a bull market, stocks don't go straight up. And in a bear market, stocks don't go straight down. There's always exaggerated moves back uh, to the upside. And that's exactly what we had uh, today after you know some pretty good aggressive selling. Notably, obviously, the big move in the NASDAQ on March the 9th that got sold off pretty, pretty aggressively. So here we are again. So the question is going into tomorrow's session, I'm going to end this a little bit premature. I have to drive my daughter uh, to a basketball practice. But the most important question for tomorrow is can the Bulls sustain more than like 15 minutes of fame? Can they live with prosperity? Can they find love? And it's been very, very tough for the Bulls to maintain any levels of consistency or follow through just because of all the dynamic moving parts that we are uh, having above. But tomorrow, can we get that second move? And if you look at where we are, right? If we look at where we are here, we did reclaim the five day moving average. And for the last few times that we reclaimed the five day moving average, the market's been kind of rejected back at the 10 day. You can see here once, twice, basically three times. And that's kind of where we are to make. By the time the Fed, by the time the Fed speaks tomorrow at two o'clock, I kind of want to be you know, nowhere near the market because it's gonna be very, very unpredictable what's gonna happen. Um, I do believe if the bulls have an ability to have a day two run, it's gonna be early tomorrow, it's gonna be pretty aggressive, probably till about lunchtime, and then the market's gonna go into kind of a holding pattern until that two o'clock area comes along. So I, I think it's gonna be the, the hardest part about tomorrow is trying to find enough range in some of the names that we all watch, we all trade to get to the 10 day moving average. Uh, you know, are there some clean looks uh, for tomorrow's session? Yeah, I mean, look, Amazon was very, very strong today. Uh, you know, strong. I, I still think it needs to reclaim uh, the high from uh, the high from that 20 to one uh, stock split announcement to kind of get into this 50 day moving average supply. Um, if you look at Nvidia, not you know, again, you're going to see a lot of charts running into a lot of a, a lot of problems. There's just not enough room into supply. That's where the biggest uh, drawback having any day two confirmation, any day two follow through. But that's our job to try to find these levels. Uh, I was more of a bystander today uh, than an active participant uh, because again, when you have dead cat bounces, and again, obviously that's what we had today. Uh, when you have dead cat bounces, you don't know if these dead cat bounces are going to last. 15 minutes, an hour and a half, or the whole day. And the first candle today, especially, you know, pretty much on all the technology names, we saw really, really strong moves literally on one candle today, right? All the way into the top of the channel here. And then the question was, what was gonna happen next? We saw a little bit of uh, rejection initially, first at the five-day moving average, and then the bulls did a great job reclaiming the five-day moving average, but now we are here. So now that we've seen what the market does, and you know we've seen this now several times since the 200-day moving average, this is a tradable market, right? Definitely a tradable market. If you're an investor, very, very tough to get excited. We've seen this movie before. Here was the bottom, and then here was the bottom, and then definitely this was the bottom. And 
Okay, it's not about bottoms, it's about what you're doing proactively with your uh, portfolio, if you are an investor, or on the trading side, which we're, we're talking about here. We're not investors, okay? I'm not an investor. I don't sit there, you know, sitting hoping that position goes up or down. We are proactively trading channels. So if you are an investor and you're watching this, you're probably getting a very little value because that's not what we're talking about. And I, we, again, we're not talking about Amazon four years from now being at 4,000. We're not talking about Tesla one day being at 1,500. We're talking about tomorrow and our capability of taking enough data in and making sure it's safe and prudent and have a, neat, a nice clear path to the goal line so we can capitalize on a day-to-day -day basis until we reclaim at least, okay, at least the 20-day moving average on the close, which we've, we've again, time and time again, have rejected here. You know, forget about the, you know, we're trying to get to the 10, but as long as we, we stay under at least the 20-day supply, which we keep on getting rejected, it's very, very tough to, to get excited for more than one day of rallying. Maybe you squeeze out two day of rallying, but as we've seen time and time again, ever since we lost the 200 day moving average, the sell bias is super, super aggressive. Uh, the days that we're getting to the downside are phenomenal days, are really, really phenomenal days. So it's very tough to get excited by a dead cat bounce moving up after a stock. It's, it's like, put it this way. It's like a stock goes from 200, right? From $200 to $60. And then the next day goes from 60 to 64 and you're doing jumping jacks you won. Again, it's like winning the tallest dwarf competition. We're in a bear market, right? We're in a bear market. We are getting some pretty good aggressive snapbacks in that bull mar in that bear market on random basis. But again, you, you, you don't have to try to convince anybody. As long as you have eyes, you kind of know deep down inside where we are. But the most important part is trying to take advantage of the next day. What can happen? Where's the clearest path to the goal line? And how you can get there without putting as much money, as much exposure, a risk as possible. Do we know what's gonna happen after the Fed announces tomorrow? I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, a lot of people believe that 25 basis points is already baked in uh, to tomorrow's announcements. We'll see, can they come out uh, come out and just start uh, capitulating and say, hey, we're not doing anything. Is that, That's on the table as well. Is it possible they come in and say, surprise, uh, 50 basis points? I don't think the economy can handle that. But again, who the hell am I? I'm just, you know, a random guy has opinions worth absolutely nothing. But we'll see, right? We'll absolutely see. So going into tomorrow, you'd like to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, right? You know, ahead of the, the Fed meeting, you'd like to see if Amazon could have a day to run. It was pretty damn strong today. Obviously, the one uh, who stood out the most. You'd like to see maybe Tesla, you know, Tesla had a, a nice little pop today, Didn't ha hasn't even reclaimed the five-day moving average, but maybe tomorrow, you know, maybe reclaims the five-day moving average and moves up a little higher. Again, the, the options market is really not dictating to us that the, that the bulls are super aggressive uh, and super excited about p potential what's happened tomorrow. But, but again, it, it doesn't really make a difference. If the market goes up, we'll find ways to capitalize. At least today, at least today's close gave us some some def definitive channels that we could trade off of tomorrow. Today, I kind of wanted to sit it out. There was a pivot to the downside this morning on Tesla, which was pretty good, ran, you know, came down about six bucks. There was a pivot off the 785, uh, ran to 801 initially, back to the upside on Tesla. And for, other than that, uh, pretty much kind of a, an observer. And a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm not a bear, you know, by, by no stretch of imagination, I'm not a bear. I'm just kind of a realist what I see in a market such as this. And sometimes when things are a little unclear and the market goes completely the opposite where the normalcy, right? The normalcy has been taking it, especially the last two months. I, I think it's healthy to sometimes to take a step back and kind of just watch, uh, watch the action play out and, and see if the bulls can actually uh, put up a fight in certain levels. Uh, again, today, you know, you could call it a small victory that the Bulls uh, reclaim the five-day moving average and maybe tomorrow have one more day and take it to this 331 level, which is the 10-day moving average. We'll see. Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. But, but I think the biggest story is uh, going into tomorrow's session is obviously the Fed. Uh, where are they as far as short-term rates uh, being risen? Um, and our job is to see how the price action reflects. Now, again, if the bulls can close over the 10-day moving average, then tomorrow's video will be, hey, if we reclaim the 10, now let's see if we can get to the 20. If we get rejected off the 10-day moving average, as you saw right here and right here and right here, we're obviously gonna turn around and start going lower. So it's all about the Fed tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of channels to the upside that are super duper tight. Uh, unless like a name like Amazon uh, reclaims kind of a bigger level here, especially 
uh, especially the split you know, buyback announcement high. This is probably the cleanest channel out of everything. If you look at everything else, super duper tight. It, it's literally trying to uh, squeeze water out of a rock because so many of these stocks has gotten have gotten destroyed, like literally destroyed uh, for the last couple of weeks. So you know, if you're trying to win uh, the tallest dwarf competition and talking about this is a victory the bears never learn, you're naive. Okay, you're, you're trying to make yourself feel better. It's not going to make me feel one way or, or another. You know, I'm a trader. I trade channels. I, I really don't care which way the market goes. But for the most part, the, the downside channels have been absolutely phenomenal. Great dead cap balance. Kudos to the bulls today. But the question is, what does the Fed do tomorrow? How do the price action align? And can the bulls play with prosperity for day two? We'll see. To be, to be answered, like they say in the old Batman episodes, we'll find out tomorrow. They, they didn't say that, but that's what I'm saying now. Guys, have a great night. Time for basketball. Time for da daddy duty. Let's see how the channels uh, play out tomorrow. Let's see where the biggest value is. The most important part is let's see where the biggest room is and we'll act off those channels. Guys, God bless. Have a great night and I'll see you all tomorrow.